the new head women's basketball coach at the University of Illinois, Matt Boland. Uh, thank you. First of all, what a great turnout. You know, uh, the coaches that are here, uh, that's one of the things, you know, at Green Bay we have is, is that relationship. I know every one of the coaches. Uh, I know their families, and it's great for you guys to come out today. Uh, I do want to thank Mike Thomas, uh, Jason Leonard. Obviously, they were huge in the process, uh, getting to know them, getting to know their vision uh, for what's ahead for this program. Uh, Chancellor Weiss, you being here today, I've heard nothing but great things uh, about you as well. Wise, I'm sorry. He said, I said my accent sounds a little bit different. I know it's wise. <laughs> but uh, the Minnesota, I'm from Minnesota and have that accent. But uh, just thrilled to be here. I do want to introduce my wife, Kari, Abby, and Reagan, uh, our kids. Uh, they have an adventurous spirit. We've moved a great deal uh, in our time. The coaching ladder has brought us different places, uh, but we're here and hoping to be here for a lifetime. You know, I told Reagan she's going in sixth grade, and you're going to graduate from high school here. Great things you know, are ahead for our program. Um, I'm so blessed uh, to be here. I will say, Ken Budoff and the players at Green Bay, you know, it, it takes a village to run a program. And Ken had a vision for in hiring me. I was an NEIA coach. He had Division I head coaches applying for the job. And uh, he got to know my heart, my character, my integrity, hired me uh, over those coaches, and, uh, and so blessed to work for him. Uh, I tell you what, the players at Green Bay, if you would watch us practice, you would be uh, in shock. How hard, how, how intense, uh, how great they are. And honestly, that, that was the hardest thing, you know, having to sit with them and tell them, you know, I'm leaving to, to go to Illinois. Um, those kids have been the neatest kids I've ever coached. Um, but I met with the players today, and uh, you know, it changes hard. And uh, it, going through transition is hard. But immediately, you could see the smiles in their faces. You could see the hope of a future and what we can build here. And uh, it was exciting to see them. Now, I knew all these players because I've recruited. Uh, coming out of high school, uh, we couldn't get those players to visit Green Bay. Uh, those players were ranked way higher than our, our players at Green Bay. So I think when uh, we practice right, we'll learn to play right. And when they do those things with the talent that we have, uh, if they learn to trust me and they learn to do the right things in practice, uh, it can be exciting how quickly this can go in the right direction. Um, uh, I do, I'm also really excited to be involved in the community. Everywhere we've been, we've dove in head first. Uh, we've made great friends and built great uh, relationships at every city that we've been in and can't wait to be in Champaign. It's so fun to have people passionate about your university, passionate about women's basketball, and uh, that's exciting uh, to be here. Uh, I do want to also um, thank uh, Vance Chester, Mike DiLorenzo. He came up and interviewed, uh, flew uh, into Green Bay uh, with, with Mike Thomas and Jason Leonard. Um, they, great to them. And they, what a, uh, I guess, sign for me uh, of their interest in, in how important the women's basketball program is to have those guys flying in to Green Bay to meet with me. And then everybody here has been fantastic. Uh, to me with Kathy Hug today, you know, walking me to my car, walking me everywhere that I need to go so I'm not getting lost. And just everybody has been uh, fantastic in reaching out here. Uh, it's been done here before. 1997, 98, you know, they're selling out a gym, they're getting to a Sweet 16. Uh, it can be done again. Again, how fast, I'm not going to stand here and make promises of how quickly we're going to win basketball games. I will promise you this, you're going to have a head coach that's going to be in the community. You're going to have a head coach that works his tail off to make this great. I'm going to get up every morning and come to work and ha find a job that you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. That's what I feel like I have. And, uh, and our players are going to learn to play hard. They're, they're as talented as they are, when they give as much effort as they can give, good things will happen and everything else will take care of itself. But thank you again for having me. I really appreciate the great turnout. Uh, I want to open it up to questions and just say, know that uh, I'm really excited to be the head coach here. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Uh, yeah, I, I had some other opportunities uh, as well. And uh, from the start, this is the place that I wanted to be because of the potential I see uh, in this program. So thank you. Marcus Jackson, Champaign News Gazette. Uh, being a Midwest guy, uh, has it been a dream of yours, that maybe the pinnacle being a, a Big Ten head basketball coach? Yeah, I would say, you know, uh, we have gone, you know, in the last two years, we've actually won, uh, six, we've gone 6-0 and against the Big Ten. Uh, but the opportunities at the Big Ten to recruit, um, to go get the very best players. If we're the 10th ranked team in the country, which we have been the last two years, 
we can go after any recruit. You know, at, at Green Bay, we still struggle to beat out the Big Ten. We can beat them on the basketball court, but it's still because of the academics, because of the campus and all those other things, it, it was a challenge. But uh, if we can become the 10th rate team in the country here, uh, the recruiting, where we can go recruiting wise is, is pretty exciting. I don't know if I really answered your question, sorry. but uh, yeah, I, I am very excited. And obviously, that's an opportunity. You don't leave the 10th rated team in the country uh, for a team that you know won nine games or 10, whatever they won, uh, unless you think you can get it done here and where you can take this program to new levels. Other questions? Someone's got to ask him. Yeah, well, I was looking at your roster the past few years. The majority of your players are from the, are from the Midwest, uh, yeah. and then a few from Illinois. What's, what's your recruiting ties here in the state, and do you plan on you know, going Illinois and then, and then branching out from there? Yeah, I really think that you have to be great within five hours. If you want to build a program and be great nationally year after year, you have to be great within a five-hour circle. The great thing is within five hours of Champaign, there are plenty of players. We don't have to go anything farther uh, than that. So that is plain. The state of Illinois for women's basketball is as good as any state probably in the country. They're producing more Division I players and at a level, you know, players going to Stanford, Duke, Connecticut, Tennessee in the last two years, there's players going to these programs. Now, we're not going to get every one of those players. I'm not going to stand here and, and lie to you and tell you we're getting every player out of Chicago. That's not the truth. We are going to get more. And, uh, and we're just getting 50% of them. If we had two of, of those four kids that left, our program would be way better. Any decision on staff yet? Uh, who, who's going to join you here? Yeah, no, I'm uh, meeting with some people this weekend. I'm speaking at the Final Four on Saturday, and then uh, Saturday night have a, a meeting with a potential candidate. I have talked to other ones. Uh, Mike DeVilbus, who is my associate head coach at Green Bay, if he does not get the head coaching job there, then he'll join me here. I'll save a spot for him. He's as good a teacher of the game of basketball as I've ever been around. Uh, and the rest of that we'll have to work through. But, uh, you know, I, I will say I probably will take my time um, I think the staff is huge. Thankfully, we have a great uh, assistant salary, and that's the thing I mentioned was probably the most important thing to me is have enough money to go get the very best, and uh, that's my plan. Coach, uh, welcome aboard. I'd Thank like you. to ask if uh, you can describe your offensive and defensive schemes and also pose the first political question, which is will your daughters be graduating from Champaign or Urbana schools? <laughs> Good question. Uh, one, the system fits. I sat down and met with the players today. I talked about running a dribble motion. You know, against Kentucky, uh, we lost that game by three and had a lead in the second half. We ran dribble motion. Calipari's dribble motion that he ran at Memphis. That's the first thing. Tomorrow when we have practice, I'll be putting in the dribble motion offense. You know, if we played a game in two weeks, honestly, as talented as these young ladies are, we could be pretty good in that. We will pressure the ball defensively. We forced 30 turnovers against Iowa State. Uh, they hadn't had more than 23 all year. Them playing at home forced 30. We played Kentucky and forced 34 turnovers in the next game. So offensively, we're going to get to the rim. You know, the dribble motion leads to layups and threes. Uh, I, I like open threes. I like both of those. So uh, that's what we'll run offensively. Now we'll run uh, a couple of set plays here or there, but I want to teach them how to play, not run a play. What happens when you don't score out of a set play? Well, they better know how to play. And so we won't spend much time running our plays. We'll spend time teaching them how to play. And then uh, we're, uh, they'll be visiting a school this afternoon and uh, looking at that. And obviously, that's something uh, we have to go. So I don't have an answer to that. Not that I'm avoiding it, but uh, we don't have that. <laughs> Jeremy Warner from Connect FM. You said you saw a lot of potential here. You're coming from a really successful program to a program that struggled maybe here lately. What specifically did you see that um, you thought this had a great potential? Yeah, well, I know I knew all these players coming out of high school. You know, the, the, the recruiting class that were juniors were ranked third in the country uh, a couple years ago. Well, how does Green Bay, who's, you know, the best we've ever had is 55th, um, how do they beat that team by 20 points? We do that by practicing right and playing right. Those players are athletic. They're talented. They learn how to practice the way we practice. It's pretty exciting. So I saw them play in high school. I know their level of ath athleticism. Obviously, they got to become more skilled. You know, uh, uh, Coach Foster said at one time, uh, when you're recruiting, recruit athleticism, recruit skill. But don't fall in love with either one. We're going to recruit both here. You know, we're really athletic. We need to become more skilled. And that's something we'll be working on. Uh, even tomorrow, we'll be talking about their footwork when they shoot, um, making sure they're balanced and stepping into their shot and, and doing that. 
don't know if you saw many Illinois games this year, but that building over there has been, been kind of empty. How do you yeah. plan on getting, getting more people in there and getting some excitement back around the program? Yeah, I know that um, people love, to, love a winner. You know, I'd lo I love to say at Green Bay that we average over 3,000 people in the conference games because we're out in the community and doing that, which we are. I've spoken at every Rotary and Optimist Club and been out speaking you know, every chance I get. But that has to com be combined with a great product. The one thing uh, I love about the Midwest, they love teams that work hard. They love teams that pass the basketball. Um, and we had fan, fans that come. We sold out our arena twice this year. We sold it out three times in the last two years. Fans, when you have a good product to put on the floor, and then the, and part of the women's basketball, too, is different than maybe men's basketball football. They want the relationship. They want our players, to, you know, young kids coming up, they want them signing autographs afterwards. I told our players today, I want you to treat them like they're your younger sister. And when they do that, they'll come back. Uh, and so that's, that's where it starts. We have to do the community, we'd love to do the community stuff, but we've got to put a good product on the floor. And how fast that can happen will depend on the trust that we can build. What kind of feedback have you gotten from the players? Are they, are they kind of excited just to, to, to have this over and know, you know what's, what's happening going forward? Yeah, they were really good today. And uh, afterwards, uh, Charisma and Adrian said, uh, we're really excited. You could see the smiles on their faces, the excitement. They know what we, how we play. Our half-court 2-1 trap, they played against it. And they struggled against it, so they know, you know what, what it can do. But it was fun to just talk to them, and I think they're very excited. Obviously, it's, it's not an easy time. One thing, it's hard for, for young ladies to give their trust to somebody immediately. You know, I can tell them the right things, but i got to back it up every single day. And uh, you know, I told them next year at this time, you know, I really hope that you'll feel like everything I told you today, I've followed through with. You can trust who I am. You can trust how I'm going to treat you, how fair and just. They may not always you know, agree with how much they play. They may not like to practice that we're going to hold them accountable and be stretched at times. But girl, they want structure. They want to put their head on the pillow at night and feel like, I gave my best today. That, that's a pretty good feeling. <laughs> Kent, I'll, I'll follow up Marcus's question about the building. You said in 1997-98 they sold out. Mm -hmm. um, that was a building that's about half the size of the assembly hall. Yep. Does the renovation have something to do with uh, a smaller room? Do you know? Are you aware? Yeah, I know that um, they're going to renovate and make it great. Obviously, it's a big piece in the recruiting. Um, you know, when you bring people on campus, you show them your facility. Uh, you know, unfortunately, that's part of the recruiting, and the wow factor I is important. You know, now I've recruited to Bryan College, which you know still has you know arguably one of the worst facilities in the country. So the facility's not everything, but it makes a difference. And so you know, I think doing the upgrade there uh, will really help. I know um, people wonder, are you, you know, would you consider playing in Huff or would you play in Assembly Hall? Um, that's something we'll have to work through. I, I'm hoping that it will be too big for, for Huff, honestly. You know, obviously, I know that's not all right. You don't snap your fingers and all of a sudden 5,000 people are coming to the game. But that's my vision of where we're going. And so you know, we want the top recruits to see the Assembly Hall and the renovation. And then hopefully, we'll be over 4,000 fans at times. Again, I, this, this is a, a, a project. This is something we're going to build towards. Well, thank you again for being here. Looking forward to get to know all of you. <laughs>